Ain't Slayed Nobody is a produced actual play podcast intended for adults and may contain material that some people find disturbing. Please see the episode notes for content warnings and listen with care. Would you look at that sunset? How could anyone ask for a better place to be than Canateo? Go west, and you're smack dab against the Rio Grande. Turn around, you've got mountains cutting the sky in half. Now folks here are up to their usual business, which is to say, unusual of late. Not just thievery and depravity, either. The strangers that recently paddled down to Canateo from the north, they're fleeing. Something. Their stories are starting to make everyone here more skittish than a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Say, you ever heard of a, uh, <laughs> ah, hell, those tumbleweeds are best left to themselves. The fine Texans here have other personal matters at hand. You see, three years ago, back in 1888, old Sheriff Bishop got cut down by Colin Brock, the most vicious cowboy in West Texas. Now Bishop's daughter Ellie, the new deputy sheriff, she is a pistol. She got one of Brock's old gangmates to turn on his crew, and there's fixin' to be a hangin' in the morning. Now if someone let on to Brock about what's happening, I'd bet he is stirring up some kind of shit. It's 8 a.m. sharp on July 12th, 1891, and it's hotter than hell in half of Mexico. Six figures stand on the Canateo Railroad Bridge, 30 feet above the Rio Grande. A mustached man in dusty, tattered clothing shuffles on the ballast near the southern edge of the bridge. His hands are bound behind his back, and a rope encircles his neck. Directly behind this prisoner, offset to his right, stands Ellie Bishop, wearing a beat-up deputy badge. She takes her stance across two railroad ties and studies the prisoner. Five paces to her right, a leery fella, Lance Kilkenny, looks out of place. Two more men, Johnny and Jeremiah, are posted on either side, about 20 yards away from the tied-up fella. They appear to be guarding the bridge. Being as these men look more ragged than a dog's left ear, it's strange to find them here. Deputy Bishop then nods to a priest on her left, and he administers the last rites. You are damned, but the Lord looks upon you as you deliver your final breaths, be gone from this earth. Those are some dark final rites. <laughs> I'm a, a very specific denomination. <laughs> the prisoner, a fella y'all know as Maxwell Posey, speaks. Oi, let's just get this over with. And Ellie, you have, you're kind of keeping a grip on this prisoner. Miss Ellie, if it's all the same to you, I'd just soon get this on with. So Johnny yells from 20 yards away. (laughs) Did I not project enough? Let me stand back and yell. (laughs) Miss Ellie, I'd just soon get this on with. 
Uh, I'd like to ask that law lady a question. Is that all right? That's okay. No, no role needed. Hey, Eric. <laughs> um, real quick. Um, you want to just get this over with? I'll just shoot that guy right in the head. No, that's too easy. All right. Have it your way. And I'll remind you that the prisoner already has a noose around his neck, which is tied to the rail. So you might want to save your ammunition. We're all kind of deferring to the uh, authority. I'm not the one actually doing it, right? Like, I have my crew who can take care of it. Oh, no, no, it's you. (laughs) (laughs) Reckon if you want to carry out a sentence, you might as well do it yourself. What's that uh, Game of Thrones quote? Uh, The man who passes the sentence should swing the sword. Miss Ellie, if you ain't got the stomach for it, I'd be be obliged. What's Game of Thrones? (laughs) (laughs) The prisoner's a bit confused, to be honest, as y'all yell back and forth about what's about to happen. He's going to say what he assumes are going to be last words. Y'all fixing to kill me unarmed like a dog, and I should have gone down fighting. As for the yellow belly who turned me over. He looks at Lance over his right shoulder, then turns back and spits. (sighs) And Brock, the redeemed family man up north. Well, I hope I see you both in hell. Now let's hurry this up. So Johnny comes on down from his post over to where this guy is. And uh, he takes a he takes an old rusted knife out and sticks it in the guy's belt. And he says, there, now you ain't unarmed anymore. So Maxwell, he feels that knife. Even though it's a small knife, he gets he didn't him, stick like, it right. in. <laughs> he didn't like shove it in his gut. He just sticks it in his belt like. Oh, let's run that back. I thought you stuck it in his <laughs> no, belly at no, the I belt. Didn't just <laughs> run up and st- just, just stabbed him. I mean, I mean Jesus. <laughs> so Johnny walks over to the prisoner and, and, put, and puts a knife. He arms him. He puts a knife in his belt, even though his hands are bound. So he symbolically does that. Leaves his sentinel post to do that I mean unless you're telling me something else as soon as he's done with that he's gonna walk back to his sentinel post or are you telling me something's about to happen let's kick him off the bridge and run yeah Ellie go ahead and kick him off please what if the prisoner suddenly gets tired of the delay and jumps off himself he's considering it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> is being a game master that bad <laughs> <laughs> can i can i just be walking over to the to the prisoner and give him a shove off uh you're you're welcome to to do that and then i, I would appreciate your dedication to killing this guy <laughs> <laughs> i would give ellie ellie the option to oppose that action uh if she wants to i wouldn't oppose it I think it makes sense in the chaos for somebody to <laughs> die <laughs> to, to, to just push him off already. Ellie, you look over and you see that Lance has a wild eye. Lance, how are you going to do this thing? Oh, I'm just going to give him a shovel. I'd like to whisper in his ear before, though. Yeah, go for it. The only reason I've done this is because you have no honor on you. There's nothing good about you, nor Colin. And that's why you have to die. And then I shove him. <laughs> that was too much. Jesus <laughs> So you dropped him on top of a warhead. <laughs> yeah, God God don't take too kindly to somebody taking another laugh. Yeah, I think that was thunder. I think that was lightning hitting. Uh, alternatively, it may have sounded... This is like the movie Clue. It may have sounded like this. There we oh. go. I like yeah, that so it, was a, so it was a clean, hard break of the neck as he was pushed off the bridge, and now he's just dangling there lifeless with any additional information he may have had in his brain now gone. Are you suggesting that maybe we should have investigated that further? I am simply <laughs> <laughs> speculating that... In I, our role as investigators, are we maybe not doing any investigating? <laughs> <laughs> we were just leaping to murder. I'm not going to recount his last words, but maybe there was something going on there. <laughs> hey, did y'all hear something when he fell? 
<laughs> I want to roll for necromancy. As he falls off the bridge, he's, he screams something about Colin Brock's location. <laughs> 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 well, I, th- I thought you told us that Colin Brock was up north when, I, when he was saying his last words in the beginning. Yeah, I, I, I do think Maxwell said something to that effect. So maybe Maxwell can tell us the location that we maybe should have heard from the dead man. <laughs> Maxwell is the dead man. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> job, job well done. So now what we have is a dead man uh, hanging from the railroad bridge. We have Ellie and Lance are kind of standing there. Just uh, they're pretty sure that Mac- oh Maxwell's dead. See, I don't like the I don't like the way you said that. They're pretty sure he's dead. Okay, did you want to did you want to put a bullet in him? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if I'll be trusting you. I offered to shoot him. Next, I'd like everyone to roll for listen. And when you roll for listen with the distraction of the hanging scene on the bridge and the sound of the Rio Grande rushing beneath you, everyone is going to be looking for a hard success here. So I just rolled a 74 and my numbers are 25, 12, and 5, if that makes sense. You don't hear anything. You're just... What'd you say? <laughs> I rolled I rolled a 100. So you failed on anything no matter what, right? Jeremiah, you hear a loud rustling sound coming from your side of the bridge. And you see something duck behind a tree. Ambush coming on, on our side of the bridge. Johnny is not exactly leaping to... Uh, Set up a defensive perimeter. I tell you, man, they're coming. Father Flint, what are you doing? I am waiting for everyone to run with me because I'm already five paces ahead. (laughs) You're running toward the ambush or away from the ambush? (laughs) I'm running away from the ambush because I don't have any weapons. Okay, so Father Flint is moving toward the Texas side, the Canateo side of the bridge. I think that Johnny likes the cut of his jib and he's also, <laughs> he's going to take one look at that and go, yeah, that seems like the right move. Now, I tell you what, now, I heard it. I heard the damn man most wants to kill him. Let's go. Now, can I elect to do a thing or do I have to wait for you to tell me to roll for something? No, you you tell me what action you want to do and then I'll, I'll make a decision about whether there's a roll. And you tell me if this is a legit thing to do, but I would like to roll spot hidden. Okay. To see if I can tell what is coming and where. Yeah, I think that's a legitimate reaction to him screaming out uh, that there's an ambush coming. All right. That is a 39. Johnny, he kind of peers over to the the New Mexico side. and, And Johnny, keep in mind, he has great eyes. And he sees nothing. He he really starts to doubt the the testimony of Jeremiah here that they're about to be ambushed. Y'all, I think that Jeremiah might be full of shit. Now I'll tell you what's full of shit, you! <laughs> this is the rest of the episode. <laughs> Keep in mind, we have a... No, you are! <laughs> hey, hey, you know what else is full of shit? That deer over there, man, he's leaving him. <laughs> we have... We have a drifter and a roaming miner <laughs> arguing. This is what happens when you set them up as sentinels, I think. <laughs> hey, Cup, can you describe to me this bridge that we're standing on? I'm a structural engineer. I need to hear these things. It's about 40 yards in length. It is uh, The surface is mostly consumed by the railroad sleepers and and rails, you know, just a regular old railroad. But there are metal beams on both sides. So there's a lot of space in between these beams, but we do have kind of cross beams and arches on on each side. So it does have kind of trusses up above. Exactly. Gotcha. So what's what's actually going to happen now uh, because of all the failures that have happened up to this point. 
about a half mile east of the necktie social on the Canateo Bridge, on the side opposite Jeremiah's hooting and hollering, two riders appear and then vanish like ghosts. They bob in and out of the heat, rising off the Texas plain as their horses barrel through the brush. These cowboys are fixing to throw fat in the fire. Cries from the birds would have tipped off the ambush if it weren't two ticks too late. The riders draw rifles without breaking stride and take aim at Lance Kilkenny, the man in black. (laughs) There are two people who are going to be firing on you in this round, and I'm going to let them... um, fire with advantage because of the surprise attack. So they're going to be able to roll twice. And if they beat their number with either of those rolls, they're going to be able to inflict some damage. Okay. The first rider takes aim and hits. So he has successfully Ow. Sh- <laughs> he successfully shot Lance Kilkenny. It's 1d6 plus 1 damage. That's 3. It doesn't cause a major wound, but Lance does take a shot through the thigh. You know, blood squirts out everywhere, gets on Ellie a little bit and Everyone with the rifle shots very aware that, that you are under fire now. Even Jeremiah has to acknowledge that the ambush is coming from the other side of the bridge. Hey, so uh, do I like subtract the hit points? Yes. Okay, so I have nine hit points now. Yeah, that's not so bad. I think I think it was more of a calf shot than a thigh shot, to be honest with you. Well, it's kind of like not through the thigh bone, like kind of off to the side. Well, you got to worry about the arteries in there. I mean... I'm not too worried about them. Okay, cool. Yeah. If it gets infected or you bleed out later, we'll just have to deal with that. Fair enough. I actually rolled for location, which is something I can do. If it was a three damage to the head, we would have had to get creative with the rifle. <laughs> well, it would have just been, it would have, it would have popped one of my cauliflower ears. That would have been fine. The second rider also fires off a shot. He's clearly a bad shot because. He's in range with a rifle, and he misses the entire party. We have two riders. They're still making an approach toward the bridge. They're probably oh, about 30 yards away at this point. This is optional in this game, but I'm going to ask you to roll for initiative. So you're rolling against your dexterity, and this is going to determine the order of combat for you and the enemies. So it's just a success or not? Well, I need to know your degree of success. Tell me one more time what numbers I what number I would want. Uh, if you want to be the first attacker, you would want to roll extreme success. Uh, hard success will go next, followed by regular success, followed by a failed roll. So, like, I have a 93. That's pretty bad. So you're probably going to go last. I got a 19, which is a hard success. Okay. I rolled a 14. Okay. So that's, uh, it's extreme success. So see okay. dexterity 70 and then one fifth is 14. Yeah. So if you roll 14 or below 14, then that's a extreme success. Alex, what did you roll? A 62. And then Jeremiah. I rolled an 82. Ooh. Okay. So I guess it's up to me. So Lance, what would you like to do? I guess I'll just, uh, go ahead and take a shot. Okay. Of what? Whiskey or rum or? Because they, well, uh, they only have two riders, right? Is what you said? As far as y'all can tell, there are two. Two two people shot at you. You're assuming. Well, see, see I, I don't like the way you said as far as you can tell. <laughs> All right. So you're, are you taking one shot with one of your pistols? Or see, what's going to happen is if you decide to fire both, you'll probably have a lower uh, accuracy. I'm only going to fire one at this point. They're not in range. Well, there's a there are different levels of ranges. So there's your base range for your gun, and then they're a little bit further out for you than that. So I'm gonna need a a hard success from you to make a hit. Okay, I guess I'll roll for it. 
So I'm I'm looking to roll a thirty-two. Is that what it is? That's correct. It's a twenty-one. All right. So you go ahead and describe the action of you hitting one of the riders. I level up my pistol. I aim it at the rider on the right, and I squeeze the trigger, and it hits him. Where? Oh, uh, do I need to roll for location? What you can do is roll your one d eight, see how much damage you do, and then use that to describe the okay uh, the wound you've inflicted. It's a seven. I hit the the bullet hits him right in the torso, straight out the back. Uh, the blood squirts. He leans off to the side, falling off his horse, and his his friend kind of looks over at him, realizes his friend's been struck. I don't know if he's down and out yet. But he, he's taking a good wound. So point point of order, do we get to decide, yeah, he fell off the horse? Uh, you can describe what you what you think is appropriate, and then what I'll do is veto you when I feel like it's excessive. <laughs> oh, good. But this uh this shot that uh that Lance fired off was a, a brilliant shot, and it did. It it struck him in the torso, he fell off his horse, and he is unconscious immediately. So you are you are now up against a, a single Shit, rider. Yeah, yeah. That was a that was a devastating shot. That's what you brought me along for, wasn't it? And now the the real hero, Johnny Rhodes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the balls on your court. How, how far away are these fellows? Okay, so the one thing about the the horses is that they keep moving forward. Uh, so the the second rider after the the one on the right. Uh, falls off his horse unconscious. He is trying to pull up quite a bit right now to kind of reassess, but he has gotten closer to you. He's probably within 15 yards. So like, how far can I move? My move rate is eight. Is that eight yards I can go? Moving is um, pretty liberally done in this game. Uh, You're not really doing a maneuver, right? You're just trying to move and then take an action. In theory, depending on how far I can move and yeah. what that looks like. So I think you can you can move about, and you're quick, so you can move about ten, eight to ten yards before you do something. Which is not enough to cover the distance if he's at 15. Okay, you cannot engage in melee contact with him in this round, let's say that. You could move. Okay. You can move closer and like get behind a steel beam or something if you want to, but I'm not going to let then you. Then that is 100% what I am going to do is... Is there a role to hide? I'm 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 letting you take cover. This is going to be something that's pretty easy for you to do. And you're not trying to be particularly stealthy about it. You're just trying to get there and get there fast. Yeah, he, I assume he's going to see me do this. Yes. If he decides that you are the person that he wants to attack in the next round, he's going to have to do that with a, a pretty big disadvantage because mm-hmm. you've taken cover behind this um, this structure. That's where Johnny's at right now. Okay. All right. Very good. So um, there was one more person who beat me on the roll. Uh, and I think it was Ellie, an actual gunfighter. Thank God for that. <laughs> has the next option. So again, this uh, villainous man has pulled up this horse about from you, probably 20 to 25 yards away at this point. Uh, Because Johnny's a little closer to the situation. And um, he's he's pretty startled by what happened because he was not expecting his partner to get taken down by a single shot from a pistol. So can I use my 38? Yes, you are very welcome to do that. I mean, is she strapped with her rifle? Um, So if you roll for the handgun, that's going to be a regular shot. And I'm actually going to say that the rifle will do pretty well at this range as well. So you have a better chance of success with the rifle. So that might be a better bet. And this was the first thing that you did when you realized you were being fired upon is drew that rifle up and started to take aim at these gentlemen. And the other writer, he's shaken. Yeah. So you could, and like, he looks back. Yeah. He's, he's kind of shaken, trying to slow things up a little bit, maybe uh, kind of looking around, trying to assess whether he can find cover, but he right now is out in the open. Uh, so you could opt to, to fire on him or you could fire on the unconscious man and try to 
<laughs> finish him off. Don't you worry about him, Miss Ellie. I got him. <laughs> one, one of them is threatening you uh, imminently. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to fire on him and hit him in the chest. Well, you may not hit him, so go ahead and roll your uh, your percentage dice to figure out that that piece of it. 72. All right, so unfortunately, Ellie, <laughs> you uh, you have a you have a beat on this man, this rider who is a little bit stunned by what's happened. Unfortunately, when he kind of stops to pull that horse up, it really throws your aim off. And you fire your gun, but the the bullet is just nowhere near the rider. All right, so it is now the lone rider's move. He's going to do something. So he's he's kind of pulled up his horse here, and he's trying to figure out his odds and, and whether he wants to tussle with those dual pistols of, uh, of, of Lance Kilkenny again. Before he takes his action, he shouts out to y'all, I just want the body. Cool. Perfectly normal thing to want. Yeah, we got a body over here. We're willing to, I reckon we could heckle with you. Why would he want the body? What's, what do you think's on the body? He's, he can't hear any of this. Wait, can we yell at him? What do you want the body for? Uh, Now don't you worry about that. I just need that body. That sounds suspicious. Yeah, hey, hey real quick, uh, uh, group huddle. Are, are we giving this guy the body? Can I look at the body first? Can we look for any suspicious things before we give it over to him? It's an odd request because the body is dangling, uh, you know, like 10 feet off of the edge of this bridge. Do what you want, what you want with the body. Anybody got a knife? Reckon we could cut the rope and drop the body in the water. Then nobody gets the body. I think Maxwell has a knife. <laughs> can i roll to climb down to the body to get the knife johnny did you recover that knife that was not my good knife i was i was not trying to i was trying to say that that was just some rusty piece of shit because i was not giving him my good fighting knife i just reckon one of them would be useful right now if anybody didn't strap it to a body that was about to be hanged yeah, this was a butter knife, basically. <laughs> that shank you fashioned out of a, a comb. <laughs> yeah, it was a sharpened <laughs> toothbrush that I gave him. All right, so um, he's he just yelled that out. He's trying to figure out uh, if he wants to continue this combat or if y'all are going to give him the body. Kind of no questions asked. I want to question some asks. <laughs> yeah, where are y'all at on giving him this body? I feel like we flubbed one thing already. So we might as well be thorough about looking for this. Continue to flub things. <laughs> I reckon somebody wants a body. They got a dark story. I'd like to ask him why he wants the body. Sheriff, what's the policy on body giving? <laughs> uh, I think we need to ask that we can kind of like recover what we missed before when we just let the guy die. <laughs> Obviously, since the guy's connected to what's his name? Brock? Colin, Colin Brock. Yes, you're. Your mortal enemy. <laughs> what, what was that guy's name? Ain't that the guy that maybe killed her pappy? Um, I think we should ask him if he has any connection to him. Like, if you want him, then are you associated with Brock? Give us a character voice on that. <laughs> I can't do a character <laughs> I really, I really can't do a character voice. Then don't voice, worry about but. it. Do your regular voice, but make sure you holler. He'll twang it and post. What do you want with the body? He's heard nothing, so he's just kind of sitting there idle on his horse 20 yards away. She, she didn't yell it enough. <laughs> yeah, no, Re- not enough hollering. Reckon he's far away, miss. <laughs> do I really have to holler? Just a little bit. What do you want with the body? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon I don't, I got orders. I don't even know. Just give me the damn body. Where are you going to take the body? Oh, shit. Who are your orders from? Look, y'all ask too many damn questions. Just cut that body <laughs> and let me load it up on my horse here. You want us to cut up the body? A little Saved by the Bell timeout here. 
can can we and i'm asking the team is there some sort of subterfuge we can engage in here where we act like we're gonna give him the body and somebody gets the drop on him i don't know what that looks like i don't hate that that's fun. It's a cool idea let's do it i think what we'd be trying to do here is one of us makes to look like we're cutting the body down and then we draw as we're cutting uh, when he gets close to collect the body, we could just dangle him over the bridge as such, and he could give us information. How about you? How about you get off that horse? You put that gun down. You come over here, and we'll get you that body. All right. So why don't you um, give me a fast talk roll? Hey, guess what? I'm not awesome at. That is a 38, which is a fail. Good job. Uh, he's very skeptical of, of what you're asking him to do. Hell no, I ain't getting off my horse. And he's he's stalled combat long enough now that he's essentially lost his turn. So if you are interested in re-engaging him in combat, you will have the drop on him in a sense that he will be last in the order. Hey, somebody shoot this motherfucker. <laughs> Well, can I? Can I? Let's kill him. Let's try it to kill absolutely him. will not be me. Can I take another shot at him then? I reckon if y'all need some help, I got me a gun here. I could shoot. Good old Jeremiah. You're probably a good 35 to 40 yards away from the rider. That's fine. Jackrabbits out in the mines in Idaho were always like 50, 60 yards. <laughs> Grandpa's got a firearm. Let's just do that. And you have, uh, remind me of your weapon. I got a 45. Jeez. Hell yeah. I'm going to turn this guy's femur into mist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. And this is going to be long range for your weapon. So. Long range for your weapon. It's just range for me. <laughs> you're you're going to need. Wow. Your handgun skill is phenomenal. I told you I'm going to wax this fucker. <laughs> you're going to need a hard success, though. Why don't you go ahead and roll to see how you do? You was that D hundred? Yes. He's gonna roll another hundred. I rolled a five. <laughs> <laughs> I think his head's gone. God damn. Uh, so why don't you describe what happened to our? Oh, you're gonna need to roll your damage first. I believe he said femur into mist. <laughs> so damage is the D eight. Uh, for you, it's a D ten plus oh. two. Oh, my bad. A D10 plus two is sick. All right. Well, I rolled a 10. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, his head's gone. All right. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you describe what happened and be aggressive? You gave him a lead salad. After I watched my whole party kind of do half-ass, I decided to pull weapons since I was getting paid a fair day salary. I thought I might help out. So I drew down on him and shot him in the leg, blowing him clean off his horse. He cartwheeled down the hill, lands right next to the body. He's still alive, though. At first glance, Jeremiah believes the rider is alive, but he's very dead. No, he's alive. I told you. <laughs> That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's so dead. He's very much alive and cognizant. Hey, it's uh, it's us, Kilkenny, checking in here. Uh, I could be wrong. I could be mistaken. But didn't Cup say the other guy was still alive there? Just unconscious. Uh, he is unconscious, yes. yes. Maybe maybe we just hold on to that body for a little bit then. Are you suggesting that maybe we should investigate something at some point? I, I'm thinking that may be something we ought to do. The the characters are called investigators and not like bloodthirsty murderers. Right? <laughs> yes. So there is one very <laughs> dead former rider. Lots of lots of lots of femur mist going around over there. <laughs> there is one. This this is possibly the most unsuccessful ambush of all time. <laughs> I think General George Custer might have something to say about that. Uh, I would like to go investigate our unconscious friend over there. Okay. And I'd like to investigate the body. I'd like to investigate the body as well. See what's so interesting about it. When you say the body, we have racked up a count. Which one are y'all referring to? I, I, I'm talking about Maxwell. I'd also like to get the knife back for Johnny, if at all possible. Much obliged. I am going to go over to the unconscious gentleman 
can I confirm he's definitely unconscious and not about to, like, leap up and grab me by the throat? Or do we need to put a bullet in this guy, too? Poke him with a stick. Can we tie him up? Let's so tie him up. He... I like that. Yeah. Because we need information out of him, so. Does anybody have a rope that, uh, <laughs> hey, we're about to pull that body up. Can we use yeah. that rope? I reckon that's a long one. Why don't you, uh, Ellie, why don't you roll for luck? Okay. 11. That's very strong. You have a luck of 65. So uh, lucky for you and your fellow investigators, uh, when you when you tied up Maxwell Posey's hands, you used a length of cord, but you have a bunch of leftover cord to do wh- whatever you'd like with. Yeah, let's tie this bad boy up. All right, that's easy enough for... Do I need to roll not tying? Oh, the five of you to tie up an unconscious man, it's going to be something that you're capable of doing. All right, then I want to rummage through his pockets. After he's tied up? So he's... Ba- yes, he's, very much after he's tied up. He's now bound at, what, the ankles and wrists? No, we 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 hog tied him. Hell so yeah. bound at the ankles and wrists, but then they're tied to each other behind his back. Can we put him up on like some sticks and like dangle him like in cartoons? Like like where he walks. <laughs> He's just tied up normally. Okay. If there's a normal way this to do some that. Some Lord of the Fly shit over here. Why don't you roll spot hidden for me? That's a ninety four. I didn't find jack shit. I couldn't find his pockets. <laughs> <laughs> But this guy's not wearing pants as far as I can tell y'all. You look back to your fellow investigators and inform them that you believe the pockets are sewn shut. <laughs> <laughs> I wasted my good rolls. We wasted the good surprise on uh, on your shitty crit fail. Well, you know your your two handgun rolls were were pretty handy as a as a team. <laughs> All right, so that was a unsuccessful aspect of the investigation. Anything else we you'd like to do? We are the worst investigators. Can someone else? <laughs> can someone else investigate, or are we tapped out on investigating that aspect? No, you can. You can all kind of poke around. I mean, there's not a lot of time pressure, as far as you can tell. There's no more ambushes. See, yeah, you, you keep coming in with that. As far as you can tell, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to know which one of you has first aid because I, I heard one of you give some points to it earlier. In the in the game. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry about that. He, and Johnny drops his first aid kit. I just dropped it in the river. If you're willing to give me half your day's pay, I, I'll patch that wound up for you. I'll be honest with you, Jeremiah. Yep, called an ambush from the absolute wrong side of the bridge. I don't want <laughs> you anywhere near me. Yeah, but the thing is, is I like uh, blew the guy in half. This does seem like it was your fault. <laughs> All right, that's fair. I'll go. I'll come patch you up for nothing. The other thing is, I, I think I still have femur mist on me. <laughs> yeah, just reckon, reckon in the mines, people be falling down and getting all scuffed up and nothing. I done sewed up a couple of stumps for people uh, <laughs> and satisfactorily attached and affixed twigs and uh, various branches on so they could be bipedal again. <laughs> I got no no proper medical training, but my grandpappy gave me a book when I was young called You Have a Body, and it showed it. <laughs> Reckon I have a knack for it, though. The creepy thing is that with Cup, I'm sure that this is exactly how he expected this to happen. Here's what I worry about. Cup had said that the ambush did come from the Texas side of the border, did come from the town that would be the nearest town to go get first aid. As much as I'd love to go back to Canateo, I'm afraid the only option I have for my first aid is to rely on old Jeremiah over there. Yeah, it's a good decision right here around the field. I can take care of it for you. All right, so let's see if this thing's about to get infected. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I got to spit on this here needle to disinfect it. I hope that you roll 100 and his leg falls off. All right, here we go. I'm rolling one. I got a 73. <laughs> Which is fine because okay. you're 80. I'm 80. Okay. Yeah, I know. It just makes me laugh because I keep rolling these fucking. So describe the first aid you've applied. The only thing you're good at is murder. <laughs> Reckon one time I found myself with some natives walking down from Dakotas 
and uh, we we was ambushed, and uh, b- uh, b- the blood mist I took and made a paste out of with some dirt powder and rubbed it on the wounds, and it helped. <laughs> Which helps Lance recover one of his hit points. You feel better, big guy? Ooh. <laughs> no, I, I, feel, I feel a little bit better. I'm not going to lie to you. I have no idea what that paste was you made, but... Some homeopathic medicine. I, I told you I done had a knack for it. I feel like it's very important that somebody discovers something about what's going on. I failed miserably at it. Are there saddlebags that we could go through on the horses? Yes, that's right. On the remaining horse, there are saddlebags. One of the horses really got startled by that that last brutal murder and, and ran off. And one horse is just kind of idling, uh, walking around the murder scene. I'm calling it murder, but perhaps it's justified. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a spot hidden, so go ahead and, and make a roll. When it's a double zero plus a number, is it just it's a single digit number. <laughs> so I have three. Three. Wow, that's an extreme success. Um, so she had the uh, ingenious idea to look through the saddlebags on the horse, and she finds all kinds of fun things, some uh, provisions, some jerky and water, which, uh, to be honest, the Texas sun beating down on all of you, it's, uh, it's a welcome sight. More importantly than that, she finds what appears to be a crudely drawn map. And it looks to Ellie like the map has the Rio Grande drawn in. So that approximate kind of snake-like shape of the Rio Grande. And there's a pretty clear marking for the origin point and the destination. She immediately recognizes the destination based on its proximity to the Rio Grande as being Canateo. And the best she can tell, and of course you can all look at the map, but... It looks like um, the origin is somewhere in the northwest in New Mexico. Johnny says, oh, awesome. Found some water. And then he walks down to the Rio Grande River right below the bridge and fills up his, <laughs> his canteen. <laughs> he, dumps, he dumps out the canteen of fresh water you found. We're about to play Sims for 20 minutes with these characters. <laughs> no, his was already empty. All right. So now investigators you have we got a map a dead body <laughs> we, don't, we don't have two dead bodies um one unconscious body with a major wound no but like we have the the thigh mist body and the hanging body oh right? you, there's the hanging body i i mean you could do something with that if you'd like i'd like to investigate that how how are you gonna do that well i'm gonna pull the rope back up i'll help thanks uh Jeremiah. No, this is the father, a man of God. Thanks, Flint. <laughs> Who would like to do a thing? <laughs> I would like to do something besides drink whiskey over here. So Father Flint and uh, and Lance Kilkenny mosey over to the railroad bridge with the uh, ambition of pulling up the corpse of Maxwell Posey. Why don't you both roll for strength for me? Uh, God, 29. 15. Oh, wow. So you, the two of you effortlessly, almost in just one tug uh, together, pull the corpse of Maxwell Posey back onto the railroad bridge where he is strewn about lifelessly. That ain't the first time you've done that, is it, boys? What? Finish something in one tug? (laughs) Damn it. (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) Okay. Dinner is served. Uh, Johnny (laughs) collects that old butter knife. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna let you do that without a roll. Okay, uh, but we wanna we wanna take a look at the body to figure out why uh, the other guy wanted it, right? What are you looking for? Are you searching pockets or? I don't know. Like, I kind of want to just cut him open and see if there's anything freaky we should know about. Ted Bundy used to do that. <laughs> Did you say <laughs> cut him open? I don't want to blow right past that. <laughs> well, I mean, this is supposed to be like spooky, right? We gotta get spooky at some point. <laughs> Are you saying this in character? Hey, our lives are supposed to be spooky, right? The spookiness might be a slow burn. So yeah, I'll just I'll just be searching the pockets then. I'm not even gonna make you roll for searching the pockets. Uh, <laughs> you uh, as Wait, but oh, I what? had to. <laughs> yeah, why? 
Well, the reason why is that uh, this is not Ellie's first rodeo, and she had already emptied this man's pockets. This is uh, actually the clothing was actually provided by Ellie uh, to the prisoner, and there's there's nothing of interest in in the pockets or um, any of the clothing. Well, well let's cut him open. <laughs> They used to put kids like you in special schools where I'm from. That's why, that's why I'm a priest. <laughs> what would I need to do to try and wake up the unconscious guy? It's not going to be something you're able to do at the moment. He's making constitution rolls to see if he's going to live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's, Should we all just wait <laughs> and see how that goes? I will, <laughs> I will say you could, you could apply medicine or first aid. If you'd like. Well, Jeremiah, you worked out well for me. Go ahead and give it a shot. I reckon I've done some necromancy in my time. (laughs) I don't know if uh, I'm supposed to allow this, but I would allow Jeremiah to apply first aid if that's what you want to do as a party. (laughs) I very much want that to happen. Okay, I reckon I'll come over and fix you. I'm going to roll. I'm rolling the D100. Uh Uh-huh. Ah, yeah, it looks like a 28 right there. So it's a hard success. So you are going to be able to apply enough first aid to kind of get him in this this hazy state. Why don't you describe the first aid you've applied? I did that thing from Karate Kid where Mr. Miyagi claps his hands and rubs them together real good and then applies it. Very good. And this is just enough to kind of jar this man out of unconsciousness temporarily. And he is looking up at Jeremiah like he's an angel from heaven. Do we have anybody who is good at fast talk? I have a 12. Is that good? It doesn't seem like it is. That that feels bad. You are the best, Johnny. I am? (laughs) We're bad at that. All right. I would like to interrogate this guy to see if I can find out why they wanted that body. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you try to fast talk this guy. All right, let me roll first, and then I'll tell you what exactly I say. <laughs> that is a 32, Ooh. which is a failure. For you, I I have you at 35. Is that wrong? Oh, that's a 35. I'm sorry, I thought it said 25. Yeah, no. So that's a total success. Hey man, listen here. Uh, no. No hard feelings, nothing. We we can get you back to Cantillo. We get you patched up and everything. I mean, I mean, sure. We'll you probably have some some legal issues, but you know, we, we'll get you patched up. You're gonna live. I just I just need to know why you guys needed this body. Take it to Olvido. To to El Vito? Need his body. You're gonna take the body to El Vito. <coughs> Where's that? Where's that at? In Olvido. No, I understand, but what what were you going to do with it? Gotta <coughs> take a look. Take a look in El Vito? <coughs> All right, boys. I think we need to to go to El Vito. El Vito, El Vito. Hey, hey, did that start with an E <laughs> or an O? <laughs> oh. I think I think this boy's bleeding out. <laughs> oh. Wait, is he saying O oh, as if he's hurt or... Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Say, oh, oh, God, yes. Oh, you're so correct. <laughs> okay, oh, oh, Vito. Uh, all right, friend, we'll get you right as rain. <laughs> and he dies immediately. Okay, <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> you win some, you lose some. The first state applied by Jeremiah was just enough. Hey, Flint, to have a Flint last can, I, can you get over here and apply your last rites or whatever you do? Yes. Uh, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we're going to old video. <laughs> I want to see if this guy's got a gun on him. Yeah, he fired that thing at you. He doesn't need it anymore. You're taking his rifle? Reckon you ought to arm yourself. I mean, I, I'm terrible at it, but... <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about the rifle you've acquired. It's a 22 bolt-action rifle. I'm sorry, that's not very good. Weak sauce. Brandon, you can have one too from the other dead guy. Same rifle. It's better than my fists. I say let's hit the road. Let's let's get to it. Let's get to Can uh Canatillo or Olvido? 
O Ovidio. And we have no idea how far Olvido is, right? Let me do this. I feel like Johnny and Jeremiah are the most likely to feel like they would understand what's going on in New Mexico territory. So why don't the two of you make an education roll for me? I rolled a 29. I rolled a 97. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So Jeremiah is very animated. He starts to tell you, Johnny, that El Vito's in southern Mexico and that, that y'all need to make haste. And I say bullshit because I rolled a 29 <laughs> and I know some things. And with, a, and with a hard success, I know exactly how close it is, right? Uh, you, you have a pretty good <laughs> sense. You know, you know that if you follow the Rio Grande north, that you're going to run up against Olvido in a couple of days. Okay, I'm going to relay that information to the to the team here. Yeah, why don't you do that? That's a good idea. Y'all, I know Canatillo's about 10 miles back up the road, but this Olvido, I heard of that place, and I think if we, we ride a couple days upriver, we're going to stumble across it. I'm fine with that. I think you're an idiot. I feel like we are frequently deferring to Ellie on what to do. Yeah, I, I think that's a good I think that it's a pretty in good this call. case, Johnny is clearly saying this to Ellie. Ellie, why don't you make a law roll? 82. You thought maybe once you got a town name that you might know someone who was kind of working the law there, maybe local deputy, but you've got nothing for old Vito. <laughs> you've never heard of this place. So you're really just trying to figure out if you're trusting Johnny, if you if you feel like the party's got to go regroup in Canatillo, or if you just want to hit the highway and start looking for Colin. So we've all got to stay together, right? It's a good idea yeah. to stay together, especially across long distances. Mm -hmm. Um I might ask each of you kind of what your motivation is to go to Olvido if that's what you end up deciding to do as a group. Yours is obvious. Wait, whose is obvious? Ellie's been searching for Colin Brock yeah. for three oh, years yeah. to bring him justice. <laughs> right. And now, now, now she's got a pretty good indication that he's in Olvido. And I'm sticking with Ellie because I hate every last member of that gang that I used to be a part of. I reckon she paid me for an honest day's work, and if we actually come across a man and killed her pappy, I'd, I'd like to help. Johnny, he's actually very intrigued by these people wanting to take that body. And Father Flint is really not welcome in uh, any town, so he's willing to go <laughs> to a, a new town and try to see if he can scrounge up some money and some new parishioners. So let's give it a go. I'm going to say you had three horses tied up at the scene. Um, the, you, Johnny. And Johnny walked, right? You, Johnny, just kind of materialized. No one knows exactly how you got there. Uh, <laughs> I, no, that's fine. I'm comfortable with and, that. And Jeremiah <laughs> just hopped on the back of Lance's horse. So they, they rode in together. So you had three horses. But, of course, there is that horse just kind of uh, wandering around in circles Wondering why its rider was um, burst to pieces. Johnny is making a move for that horse. Okay. So, Ellie, you have your horse. Your your trusty horse is there. Father, you rode in on a horse as well. Um, awesome. And uh, Lance, you also have a horse. Jeremiah, I don't know if you have any interest in the horse Johnny's going after. I, I pose because of the map, and I pose because I want a pony. That's that. I, that's fine. Yeah. Are you are you opposing physically, or do you want to have like a a battle to see who can break this horse? <laughs> <laughs> Is this Black Beauty? What are what are we doing? We're just gonna we're gonna make five percent animal handling rolls until someone succeeds. <laughs> reckon reckon I'm gonna challenge you to breaking this horse down. And whoever, we gonna call it, and whoever it comes to, it loves. 
<laughs> that's good. Uh, so, so instead of animal handling, I think that's fair to the animal. <laughs> um, I'm actually, I'm sorry for this, Johnny, but I'm going to ask you to persuade this horse. Instead of persuade it, instead of using animal handling, why don't you sweet talk it like you did that unconscious man over there who's dead and hog died? <laughs> I'm gonna say, hey, 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 little fella, come on over here, <laughs> roll for this. That's a fifty-six. <laughs> All right, Jeremiah, give me a give me a roll. I got it. I got an eleven. Eleven. Okay. So Jeremiah, uh, sweet, how do you sweet talk this horse? Hey, hey, horse. Ah. Uh, you know, if you come over to me, I'll let you choose your name through a series of nods. I will respect you as a as a fellow creature on this earth, and then I will give you various vegetables. What do you think about that? If you agree, why don't you come over here and give me a nudge on the chin? So, so the the horse the horse straight away just walks directly toward Jeremiah and and plants a big kiss on his face. All right, so Jeremiah has a horse. Johnny, you are drifting, literally, through this world. Wait, hey, you said I materialized here. As soon as they start to ride off, I just sort of phase out of existence. And I keep reappearing on the horizon. <laughs> it's like a, a race car game when you go too far off the track. You just... Yeah, I'm, blue, I'm the blue shell. <laughs> yes, you just appear back on the track, miraculously. <laughs> so you could, Johnny, request to ride like a tandem horse with uh, one of these other riders. Well, I think the only one I'm going to ask is Ellie because I hate everyone. (laughs) (laughs) So Ellie, I won't make you roll for it or anything. I'll just give you the decision of whether you want to (laughs) let, let Johnny ride along. Yeah. Come on. All right. Good. Thank you, Miss Ellie. (laughs) Which is very generous because Johnny um, has not bathed in probably a couple of weeks, but I am slight of frame. That's true. That is helpful. I'm not taking a lot of space. And you are, if I'm not mistaken, the most attractive member of the party. That is alarming. (laughs) Is that true? It is true. Wow. Yes, it's true. Yeah. I mean, he's not well bathed, but there's sort of a rakish charm there. It's that McConaughey thing. Yeah, exactly. He's a McConaughey. Hook hook him horns, baby. (laughs) The the team of investigators on four horses rides very ceremoniously across the railroad bridge, trampling over Maxwell Posey's body, breaking his neck one more time. <laughs> and it's a little bit of time has passed. It's probably Where was the folium? It's probably <laughs> <laughs> It takes takes Played a little while to pull things up. Rapid succession. <laughs> <laughs> this is every horse walking over Hang on. Posey's neck. <laughs> I got something back there. I gotta ride my horse back five feet and go get it. Okay, I got it. <laughs> and then oh, he goes wait. forward. Look, there's dandelions. I want to go look at them closer. <laughs> okay, I'm really coming back for real now. <laughs> <laughs> so there's. There's actually no more bone to break. <laughs> and we're moving on to cartilage. <laughs> I reckon that went further off the rails than Maxwell Posey himself. Nonetheless, the party sets forth single file. Their horses already huffing in the heat of day, our five investigators creep toward a landscape washed out by a white hot sun. Echoes in the dry wind blowing in from the north carry bad omens from Oviedo. So am I going with him or? <laughs> Who's talking? <laughs> Who is that? Wait, he's got to ride over here. He's going to walk over the neck again. It, it's, it's me. It's me. It's your boy, Lance. <laughs> Lance, you uh, you stated that you were going to go exact revenge on Colin Brock's gang. So I believe that uh, you are going. Okay. I just wanted to make sure <laughs> And then, uh, <laughs> I don't even know. That was, <laughs> you look back and, and one of the beams from the bridge has fallen 
on the poor Maxwell <laughs> Posey. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. So we are in some ways ready for the next session. So <laughs> All right. With, let's start right now. Yeah, let's, with, yeah. This is fun as shit. <laughs> I love this. You are listening to Ain't Slayed Nobody. For ad-free episodes, heaps of bonus content, and special programming, please join our Patreon posse at patreon.com slash ain't slayed. Or subscribe to Ain't Slayed Nobody Plus at Apple Podcasts. See the show notes for full credits, and help us grow by posting friendly reviews and spreading the word to your friends and followers. Thank you and good luck out there.